Hey everyone and welcome back to our channel. It's been a while since our last post, but we are happy to be here again. Today I am doing an installation of Rancher. This is the company, especially their product called Rancher. This is the product and configuring Rancher server. This is the management component. Those guys do like their name and they keep it short and easy. What is Rancher? The product? It's a management for Kubernetes on any platform, on premises, IS, as a service, you name it. I want to point some things from start. They offer a free of charge training course on Rancher and containers. You can take a free certification for Rancher operator after watching their self-paced training course. They recommended five weeks for training, but if you have some time available, you can do, you can go through the video in two days. They have a great documentation. I mean, it's really, really good. They have an easy solution for deploying old Rancher components. I've done it a few times. It's incredibly easy. It's open source. So big thumbs up for Rancher, keep up the good work. Now let's switch our video to the deployment process. I am using an on-premise deployment for Rancher in my vSphere 7 lab. I've done the installation for a single node cluster, in quotes, single node cluster, on my Intel NUC with only 8 gig of RAM, works fine, RAM is the only limitation. I've prepared a bunch of IP addresses, DNS in and records for all the servers and planning to install Rancher server on the management 01 VM. The database and control plane will be installed on management 2, 3 and 4, while the worker nodes will be on worker 1, 0, 2 and 0, 3. All virtual machines are running Ubuntu 18.04 LTS, up to date, SSH is installed and running on all, all of the uh, uh, nodes. And in terms of resources, they are configured with two virtual CPUs, 4 gig of RAM and 40 gig from the data store. On top of the networking requirements, like IP, DNS records and SSH, Rancher needs Docker. All Rancher components are installed as containers on the servers, so you need to deploy Docker next. I did mention that Rancher did a great job for offering all the tools you need to spin up their components. Rancher offers a single command for installing Docker 1809. If you plan to use something newer like 1903, go ahead. I have installed Docker on all nodes, but just for the sake of this video, here is on Worker 03. Press the command and wait for the installation to finish. Next, you need to install Rancher server. In my scenario, I'm doing this on MGMT01 VM. This will expose the management interface accessible for administrator using the browser paste this command on MGNT01 and the Rancher server will be installed as a container. This will only take a few seconds and once this installation is finished, you will be able to access the management interface of Rancher directly from the browser. In my case, I'm using Brave, but all the browsers are supported for, in the, for example, Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Mozilla, you name it. The default username for Rancher is admin and the password can be randomly generated or defined by the user. After that, you have to agree the end user license agreement and also you need to define the Rancher server URL address. This is mandatory for all servers to access this address, database, control plane and worker nodes. So we have access to the console. This is up and running. I really like their dark theme. This is something that can be configured from the preference menu. Light, auto or dark, depending the time of the hour when you're accessing the console. For the time being, I will use the dark, especially it's matching my VMware vSphere theme. Now let's add the cluster. Rancher can integrate with multiple components like managing an existing cluster or integrating with IS providers like Amazon Web Services, Azure DigitalOcean, on-premises like VMware vSphere, or managing hosted Kubernetes provider offers like EKS or GKE. For now, I will select the custom cluster type. I will name this cluster as testing. We'll skip the members role and labels. I will select the Kubernetes version, network provider like Canal. You can also do Flannel, which will enable the Windows support if needed but I will go with Canal. Under the custom cloud provider, under the cloud providers actually, I will select the custom and hit next.
Now here, you can define the roles like uh, the database role, control plane, and worker, and what servers will run them. I will enable the database, which is the etcd, and the control plane. This will actually run on the MGMT machines, and the worker, of course, it will be uh, executed on the worker nodes. Now, let's paste the command on the management machine first. I copy this one to clipboard, switch to my SSH connection, go to the management O2, paste this command, and the deployment of the database and the control plane will start. I will do the same for management 3 and management 4. Now, this will actually show some information in the Rancher console as nodes are starting to register. I will also execute the same command, but only with the worker role. This will be running on the worker 01, worker 02, and worker 03 nodes. Great. The nodes will start a long processing task. So grab a coffee, tea, or water, as this will take some good 15 to 20 minutes until the cluster is marked as stable and active. Mind that you can see some error or notifications. It's okay, just give it some time to finish. Great. We now have the cluster up and running. You can see the node information, status, version, and resources from the nodes tab. While moving to the cluster view, you can see the current resource utilization and the resources available for the cluster. Next, let's deploy an application. You need to go to the projects and namespaces. I will click the default project and use the deploy button in the upper right corner of the screen. I will name my application Hello World and also Rancher offers a Docker image with this command. Next, I will create a port mapping using port 80. Make sure your port mapping is set to random on listening to every port and we'll only give one port for this Hello World application. Once finished, just hit launch. Your pod is now deploying. Once ready, you can access the app by pressing the port generated and the TCP button. If more ports are needed, go in the Resources tab, Workloads, select your app, press Edit, and modify workload type by adding more ports. I will add three more, making a total number of four running the Hello World application. There is so much functionality in a Ranger, like a dedicated dashboard view for going in depth with the resources consumption per cluster, which you can access it by using the try dashboard button in the upper right corner of the screen, or as mentioned earlier, integrating it with different components. Amazon Web Services just require the Nexus key and secret key, or in my case, later when I will integrate VMware vSphere, I just need to point it to the vCenter server and provide the a vSphere account for integrating Rancher with, uh, with vSphere. Now, I think that is it for now. Again, give those guys a chance, look at their website, install the product, it's incredibly easy, the documentation is nice. You also have access to a free certification, probably can be useful later if you're trying to get a job. And stay tuned for the as on the Asset Force channel, uh, hit that thumbs up button, um, subscribe to our channel, we definitely need all the support. And until next time, take care and stay safe. Thanks again for watching.